everybody, and thanks for joining me today. So I've got most of the uh, main link's face done since last time. He's got both his eyes now. So I'm working more into the Zora link today. Back in these electric blues again. Yeah, we're almost at 53% now. We'll definitely pass that this session. Yeah. So, there's some bigger blocks of color here, but also some confetti, so there should be a bit of a mix, I think. <clears throat> I think we're going to have Zora Link's eye probably in this session. Yeah, they made his his hat more blue than than green. <laughs> Although, if I remember correctly, his his, his uh, Zora hat does have some blue on it. So, yeah, blue is my favorite color. It used to be pink when I was a when I was a kid, and then I was around, oh, I don't know, eight or nine? Yeah, it changed to blue, and then that's been my favorite ever since. Very bright sunny day today, but we're supposed to get snow during this week, so not a lot, but enough that, you know, <laughs> have to shovel it. <laughs> the part that I hate the most is that um, our front walkway, the roof line hangs over until it's right in the center of the walkway, and then all the melt will uh, drip off the side and onto the walkway and then freeze again, so yeah. It's, it's not good. <laughs> I had to uh, have my husband move our mailbox from the front door to uh, the post at the beginning of the walkway. Yeah, because it's safer that way. Because yeah, we almost got our mail service cut off at one point because it, the ice was bad. My husband actually took a blowtorch to it. <laughs> oh. In this part of the world, it is not spring yet. It is in a lot of other places, but not here. Yeah, we always say don't plant your summer garden here until May long weekend. Sometimes even later, it can still be a risk even then. Yeah, I'm not a green thumb, so I, I don't put in a summer garden. Yeah, fortunately, my apple tree really doesn't need a lot of care. Okay, 995. Oh, hang on, go look at what else I have parked here. How long is this one? Well, that's pretty long. Okay, so instead of adding a new thread, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to the left a little bit and then carry up because yeah, there's this one stitch here that would be closed if I did both of the number four symbol next to it. So that is why I'm choosing to do it that way. Let's see how long. Okay, let's see how long of a piece I want. Probably a full length, I would think. Well, no, maybe not. Actually, I have a leftover piece here that might be sufficient. We shall see. Yeah, 
Yeah, so I find I kind of end up working from the side over or from the bottom up more than I end up working top down. It just, that's sort of how it ends up working out since I don't like to close in the stuff that's to the left of stitches I'm working, so. If that doesn't bother you, then you won't have to uh, shift things over as much. So yeah, that's why I did that because then, oops, this one that I have parked here, I can carry it back up and I don't have to add another thread that way. And actually this thread is probably just enough for about these four stitches. So I do these two here. This one up here. <clears throat> and then park it right there. Perfect. Okay. Yes, yeah, there's a shorter one, so I will have to add another piece towards the top of this diagonal. So yeah, where I decide to run my threads depends a lot on uh, how long the already uh, attached threads are. edge with these four. Yeah, fortunately, even when they're calling for snow, it's not supposed to get that cold. <clears throat> Although it's kind of funny, the irony is um, our entertainment room downstairs, the warmer it is outside, the colder it is in there because um, yeah, if it's warmer outside, the furnace kicks on less often, and that room is quite well insulated because uh, my husband did that for soundproofing. <laughs> like, it's not perfectly soundproof, but it is better than just the regular walls. <clears throat> it was interesting, actually. He looked into how much soundproofing costs, and it's really expensive. And so he thought to himself, there has to be a better way, like, even just to buy the soundproofing tiles, um and do it yourself, not even paying for someone else to install it is, uh, is uh, pretty pricey. So he went and looked into it and what he ended up doing was he made ceiling panels where he, um, he stuck the Dixie cups, the pointy ones. He glued Dixie cups all over the one surface. Then he spray painted them black because so that you can't really see them. And uh, yeah, it actually worked pretty well. And it was a fraction of the cost because you know, Dixie cups are a lot cheaper, so. And it, it does help with the soundproofing, so. Because, yeah, the entertainment room is kind of like right under our son's bedroom, so we want to be able to watch movies later at night and not disturb him. I mean, now that he's a teenager, he's up later than us a lot of times, but this was when he was, he was uh, younger. Yeah, I kind of feel bad. Kiddo's a night owl like me, which kind of sucks. That's definitely not how our society is set up. Uh. Yeah, actually it worked out kind of well because that was when my husband uh, injured his Achilles tendon so he couldn't do actual like renovation work. So he still had a lot of those panels to uh, glue the cups to. So yeah, that's what he did for weeks while he... Uh, while he was recovering. <clears throat> yeah, he was fortunate he didn't need surgery, but yeah, it was 
Oh, not a fun time. This is around his eye, like I said, the Zora Link's eye, I think. So that's why there's a fair bit of confetti there. Yeah, on the main Link's eyes, his eyes had like 30 colors each. It was, yeah, a lot. Of course, this is a little smaller. He's in, the Zora Link is more in the background, so it won't be quite as many, as many colors. See, I'm going to have to start another color there, or another thread there for this color. Let's see how long my leftover bits are. Yeah, there we go. I'm not going to leave this one threaded. It's short and getting to the point where I have so many, <clears throat> it may cause tangling. So, yeah, at that point, it's just easier to just re thread it later. It ends up having to spend a lot of time trying to pull it free without tangling it. It's going to take me more time than just uh, yeah, threading it again later. I mean, there is more threading in this method, but that doesn't really bother me anymore. I've become fairly quick at it. My husband is surprised now because uh, if I'm stitching on just background stuff downstairs, that room is very dark lighting. And he's like, how do you manage to thread it without, you know, you can barely see it. I said, well, it's by feel you know, pinch the end of the thread between my fingers and just kind of push it through the eye of the needle and it works most of the time. Okay, we need a new piece for this color. Plus, having good needles to uh, that have longer eyes make it easier to uh, to get the thread to cooperate. What I find harder to thread in the dark is actually the um, my gritting thread, the sulky. Uh, it, uh, yeah, I don't know, because it, it kind of curls on itself a bit, so when you try to push it through the eye of the needle, it kind of just bends and curls up rather than wanting to go through, so it's kind of a pain. Yeah, lots of, lots of blues here. It's like eight or nine different color blue in this area, but well, that's where the detail comes from, right? Yeah, I had um, one project I worked that had a whole bunch of the 939 navy blue and the 823 all intertwined with each other. And when you're working with a close up, you could barely see it. It's one of those, it adds enough shading that you see it more on a subconscious level almost than a conscious one, yeah. My husband could see it. Uh. Yeah, it depends what color. He's colorblind with certain colors, but others he can, he can see more difference. Yeah. Oranges and purples tend to blend more together.
think I'm going to be pin stitching this quite a bit here. Get quite a few threads ended off in here, I think. So there's like a bigger block here, but each row kind of needs a bunch filled in before I get to it, so. But, ah, then I'm less likely to get my repetitive stress injury, so there's that. Okay. Kind of no matter what color I pick, I'm stuck in the whole stitch one, stitch, and then park. And switch colors again. Yeah, because they're kind of all slanting this way a bit. So going the opposite of my diagonal there, so. Oops. Grid line's definitely very helpful here. Keep me from mixing up, yeah. Yeah, I left that threaded, but there really wasn't much point. The thread was really too short to hang on to that needle. This uh, color is a bit brighter than it shows on the mock-up. This is a very electric blue, and the color here on the mock-up looks a little more subdued. Well, I find the mock-ups do generally look a little more pixelated than the final finished product. It's more to give you an idea to make sure you don't have the wrong color so somebody's face isn't, you know, green or something. <laughs> Don't do that, my gosh. Oh, that was one of my hairs stuck in there, yuck. <laughs> up with one of his eyes here and then uh, the other one will be the next diagonal. It's kind of how the main link worked too. <laughs> he has both his eyes now. And then part of the uh, mask of truth 
covering his uh, nose. more than one place I can park this it really doesn't matter there's one over to the left here there's one down here it kind of they're about the same so I just picked one could have gone the other way and it really wouldn't have mattered that much so yeah I've sometimes people ask me why do you choose this instead of that uh sometimes it's just one isn't necessarily better than the other so I just pick one <clears throat> Sometimes either one would have worked just fine. All right, so as usual, back over to the left a bit and work my way out. Quite in the right spot. This stitch looked a little wonky. There we go. This keeps things from getting boring, that's for sure. <laughs> Having to switch uh, threads so often. Yeah, so the uh, the right hand edge of this is like six columns, six more columns over. So yeah, we're getting close. So I'm thinking we may reach that by the end of the month. Well, I'm doing approx. I'm doing three passes across this pattern. They're not all exactly the same. Uh, you know, in height, but pretty close. So I've been thinking reaching uh, the two-thirds mark by the end of this month, which of course would be pretty much having filled in all the way to the far edge. That'll be a little past, I think, because this uh, this pass is about is 70 rows instead of my normal 60. So the first pass was 60. This is going to be 70. And then the very last pass across this pattern is 62 rows. So it'll be 
pretty close to two thirds, somewhere thereabouts. So, so we'll see. Hopefully I don't get sick again. Knock on wood and all that. <laughs> okay. So let's see what little short bits I've got. Fortunately, that short bit is just a little too short. It's only good enough for one stitch. I need it for two, so. Well, that's what happens. Eventually my little bits get used up and I gotta start all over again with longer ones. So then I might as well do these two stitches and then I'll park it in the next diagonal. I was hoping to have a short piece just long enough to do these two stitches and end it and then I would start a new piece over in the next diagonal, but it's just not the way it's gonna work out. That's okay. It's still within an inch. Yeah, I like to carry it. No more than that that point it just uses up more floss so okay so we're going to reach the point i think where a lot of threads will either be ended off or parked out of the diagonal so they'll be out of my way so yeah i could end up with quite a few threads in play at once but then eventually work through them and then yeah so sometimes when I do this I'll purposely choose one that I know I can end off or park out of the diagonal first. That way I have one less thread to uh, to have to deal with. So I could have chosen to do this row of all the same color stitches there, but I chose to do this one here because I knew this thread is going to be done after these two stitches. Now I have one fewer thread attached to have to have to juggle. see if this one is yes this one's long enough to bother parking elsewhere now I could park it over here to the left but a lot of the stitches between are done and I would have to run it along the back to sort of tack that uh carry down so instead I'm gonna park it over here which is I think one stitch closer and between the two threads is not stitched yet so then when i stitch all this that will anchor this uh this thread carry that way so that is why i chose to do that but either one would work again okay all right and then here's another one I'll do and then I will park this aside for the next diagonal. Yeah, so I was right, we get one eye. <laughs> His other eye will be the next the next diagonal.
Okay, so once again, over to my left hand side and working my way back out again. Okay, I'm just going to look at what I've got. Okay. Pause. Yeah, okay, so what I'm going to do with this is I could choose to do this and carry it down here, but there's only four stitches here. This is a long piece of thread. So instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this one stitch here in the corner, and then I'm going to park it down over here where there's a lot more uh, stitches, and then that way, yeah, that way I'll use that one for those stitches and I'll attach a short little piece here to do these four. Since I have it, I do have a short piece left over. I checked, so. So yeah, how long the attached thread is, is often the biggest decider of what I decide to park where, which direction I want the threads to travel. Yeah, like I say, I like to say this is kind of like almost a logic puzzle. <laughs> Although there isn't only one right answer like there is in a, you know, an actual logic puzzle. Yeah, I like to play Sudoku a lot, so. <laughs> Keeps the brain sharp. <laughs> yeah, my, um, my grandpa was really into crosswords, but I've tried them, but the problem is that Unlike a logic puzzle, the answer's not there. You have to, you know, know the trivia or whatever. Whereas with a logic puzzle, it's, you know, like Sudoku, you don't have to have outside knowledge. You just have to figure out and eliminate, you know, the possibilities that uh, are incorrect until you're left with the only correct one. Yeah. I've played some on the, like, the... the hardest extreme levels and I've managed but not consistently <laughs> yeah I generally play on like the hard not the expert yeah or depending on how tired I am I might go down a level and play like medium or something because yeah it it does take quite a bit of brain power you're holding quite a few possibilities in your head at once even if you do use the pencil marks yeah, it's interesting because my husband and I, we both play them, but we solve them in different strategies. The way he, use pens, he uses the pencil marks is different from the way I use them. Like I will, once I can no longer have any more like obvious, um, obvious answers, then I'll go through and sort of do all the possibilities for each um, empty square and then start eliminating, you know, ones that don't make sense, ones that can't be correct, you know, until you're left with only one. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. We're both about the same skill level for it. So I mean, yeah, our different strategies work for us. So yeah, many paths to the same result. said these colors are slanting this way a fair bit because I think this is yeah the bottom of his face here so. yeah, there's some bigger blocks but also still a fair amount of confetti here keeps me on my toes
piece was too short to leave threaded, plus it's kind of almost out of the diagonal, so I will probably leave it. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, did I put that? Yeah, I surely did. I put that in the wrong place. Silly me. Yep. Uh, I should have been down here. Ah. Ah. Uh, since I just attached this, I'm thinking, yeah, unfortunately, I find it really tough to uh, remove this loop start since I did it from the front. Yeah. So I blew it. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, pull that out. We'll try that again. Well, I guess we will be left with a long piece then. <laughs> I screwed up. <laughs> yeah, the nice thing I find with this method is because I'm filling in without leaving any gaps, I usually catch my mistakes very quickly like that because I was going to do the stitch that was right next to it. But when I picked up the appropriate thread, I realized there was a gap left. And yeah, that this one wasn't done. And then I realized there should have been two stitches here for this thread and I there was only one. That's why I realized very quickly what my mistake was. Yeah. So let us try that again. Yeah, I found when I stitched cross country, I often wouldn't catch that until way later. And then it was a decision of, do I really want to unpick a bunch of stuff to try to fix it or do I leave it and hope that it's not noticeable? Some people also say they go over the incorrect stitch in the right color, but I'm always paranoid that it's gonna be too thick. So. <clears throat> and often in these areas, the colors are so similar that sometimes you can kind of fudge it a little bit. <laughs> It really depends where in the pattern is and how different the color that you stitched with <laughs> incorrectly is. So, but yeah, as I was able to catch that mistake almost right away, then that made picking it a little easier. That meant that thread wasn't caught on other threads from being sewn into by other threads around it. Because then trying to pull it out when it's been <clears throat> snagged is, uh, it is a nightmare. Guess how I know. <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, like I was saying earlier, leaving the carry where it will be stitched over because yeah, it ends up very secure. You can't pull the thread out even if you want to often. So it works very well. I've actually seen where some people, instead of pin stitching, that is how they end all their threads. They they thread them down over to the side, and then once they've been stitched over enough, they clip the end and uh, pull any very last little end to the back. So that's not my way, but I mean, it definitely works. I've seen people do it. And again, it's another way that you can end your thread so that you don't have to flip your work over. I never turn my work now. Unless there's a big snarl or something on the back, yeah. It saves me a lot of trouble, plus you less tangling of the threads if you're always flipping your, you know, your frame around with threaded needles hanging, then yeah, <laughs> you're way more likely to get tangles. It's just no fun. Yeah, so it's kind of funny. I bought this stand specifically because, that didn't quite go down right, specifically because you can swivel the top all the way around because at the time, that's how I still stitched. I still turned my work to end my threads and I wasn't parking yet. So I was cross country, but then yeah, slowly over time, my method uh, evolved and now I learned ways so that I never have to turn my work around. Saves a little time too, I find.
Okay, I'm just gonna check the length of another parked thread. So that is a short one. Okay, so that was just to help me decide what was gonna go where. There's a few options of where I can park this thread. So I'm just gonna go with the stitch that is the closest right down here. Oh yeah, there's his eye. I have mine set up to double tap to park, but if I don't double tap fast enough, then it thinks I'm just selecting it to mark it done. So. Yeah, definitely past 53% now, like I said. Yeah, who knows, I may even get further than two-thirds done this month. It all depends. Although, there is the World Championships of Figure Skating this month, and I'm going to be watching that, so... <laughs> yeah, I can't stitch while watching that. Uh, that's when I do some knitting. <laughs> yeah, working on this lace cardigan that I started in, like, 2014. Yikes. <laughs> I haven't worked on much since. I, uh, yeah, I'm all done. I have half of one sleeve left to do. The sleeves always seem to take the longest for me to get them done, though. Maybe because when I'm stitching the body of it, I'm using big, long needles. I don't have to switch as much. When I'm knitting sleeves, I usually do them on two circular needles, which means there's a lot of moving stitches around in preparation to knit them without actually knitting them. So that does take some time. Okay, so I'm gonna go way over now. Yeah. Just going to move these aside a bit. So I'm gonna sort of fill in here and then work my way over again. Okay, so 3808. short little piece for a single stitch. Yeah, sort of getting back into a bit of the main link. There's still a little bit of his face left since I work diagonally, not in columns. Yeah, some of his hair and his ear extends over and covers up a bit of the Zora link there. Okay, so we have three of the link forms started, but the Deku link is in the very bottom right-hand corner, and he's smaller than all the others, so it'll take a while for us to get to him. 36. 768, which is funny because that's the first form you get turned into in the game. <clears throat> I liked his little, um, his shield. It's like a big shell and <laughs> he hides under it like a turtle. Yeah. It's pretty cute. I'd make him face the camera and he, I'd pull out his shield, but then make him look up while he's still holding his shield. So it's like he's peeking around while still covering his head with it. <laughs> yeah. All right. See, oh, look, he's got an umbrella because in the uh, day two of the three day cycle, it rains. So. Yeah. And apparently I found out that if you use the uh, magic beans, 
when it's raining, you don't have to water them. The rain does it. It was like, oh, I saw that on a, uh, you know, little secrets video. And I was like, oh, come on, seriously? I never knew that. I guess I never used the magic beans while it was raining. Yeah, because otherwise you have to carry a jar of spring water and water it and then they grow so that you can use them. Yeah, it's funny because in Ocarina of Time, instead for them, it's you plant them when you are a kid and then when you're grown up, they're fully grown. So it was funny because the first time that I did, um, I played that and my husband's like, oh yeah, you can go plant the beans now. So I plant a bean and you know, this tiny little sprout comes up and then I'm like, that's it? Like, it doesn't do anything? Because I didn't know it had to be, you had to wait until you're an adult before you can actually, you know, use them to fly around. Some of them are kind of tough, though. They take you to, you know, secret areas where you can get pieces of heart and stuff, but they go so fast that it's hard to jump off at the right point. Especially, say, like in the uh, volcano. Yeah, and not end up falling into the lava. Did that a few times. Okay. Yeah, and when you're a kid, you can't wear the uh, the fire tunic, so you have to kind of run in, plant the bean, and run out before you run out of uh, hearts, run out of time. Yeah, it was kind of frustrating because they have one of the great fairies gifts is the magic of love where you don't take damage. So I tried using it, but the thing is he still reacts as if he's being hit and stuff. Um, you just, it doesn't take any heart damage because I guess that's how they programmed it. So it's kind of frustrating because I wanted to use it in a place in the game where there's a lot of bats and you have to shoot these things, but it's hard because you're trying to shoot. And then when you get hit by an enemy, it goes out of first person view and uh, you have to re-aim all over again. So I thought, oh, I'll use the magic of love and then I won't have to worry about, you know, losing my, my target. But unfortunately, no, it didn't work that way. You still get pulled out of first person view as if you got hit and took damage. So yeah, it's like, well, that was kind of useless. <laughs> yeah, I think the most useful of her, her spells that she gives you is the fire one. You make a big, you can cast it and it makes a big sort of fireball around you that goes out. Because in fact, in one point, you do have to use it to get into the entrance of the uh, the shadow temple, I believe. Yeah, because there's a whole bunch of torches around you in a circle. And if you try to light them like with fire arrows, it won't work because the first ones will have gone out by the time you get to the last one. So you have to, you know, cast the uh, Din's fire. And then there's one extra one that is up on a ledge that you have to light with a fire arrow and yeah it was funny because my husband said it took him forever to figure that out he couldn't figure out he tried lighting one with a fire arrow and running around with a deku stick to try to um get it and then yeah i said we'll just use the fireball and they're like oh duh <laughs> uh, i use the warp magic sometimes too but uh yeah i found the protection spell Magic of Love one was pretty useless. At least if you're trying to use it so you can aim stuff. Oh, cool. We're going to get a zero. Woohoo. Okay, I'm just making sure I'm putting this in the right place here. Yeah. Counting from those grid lines to double check. Yeah, actually, I got another zero the other day. So it was one of the... Um, one of the peachy ones on his face was all used up. I guess it doesn't get used on his hands, so. Excellent, woohoo! One envelope I can put back into my primary set there, woohoo! Oh, this might be another one. Sweet. Yeah, looks like it. 3846. Oh, that would be in this tub. I have to have two tubs for this because there's so many colors. They don't fit in one. Yeah. 
I can fit about 90 colors in a tub because, uh, yeah, when I was working on my last project, it was 90 colors, so they all fit in one tub. But this is 125, so I had to split them up between two. Yeah, I just use um, their ice cube tray tubs I got from uh, the dollar store. They're uh, skinny and then long and tall, which makes them perfect to fit uh, the envelope standing on end. I actually, what I did was at the store, I grabbed a pack of envelopes and then I went through all the containers finding which one fit just right. Because I had a few that were like this, but they ended up sort of cockeyed because they were like a centimeter too skinny. And yeah, I wanted something that was just wide enough to hold the uh, the envelope standing up without them sort of, because I had an old one and they kind of fell around a bit because it was a little bit too wide, so yeah. Yeah, and in Pattern Keeper here, you can hide your zeros out of the thread list. Although, when you get a new zero, it it's highlighted in yellow. And then, I think the next day, it will be hidden again. So when you first get a zero, it won't hide it, even if you toggle it on and off. I tried that, but yeah. But I guess people really wanted to be able to see their new zeros, so they put that in as a feature. Don't go making a knot right there. Why are you doing that? Stop being a pain. Oh, come on. I was about ready to finish this thread and now you're being... Why are you doing that? Oh, that's frustrating. I don't see a knot, so I don't see why you're not pulling through one way or the other. There we go. Hmm. Oh, there was a tiny knot. Ah, that's annoying. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to tack this down over here a bit to ensure that that knot isn't going to come through on this very last half stitch here because I think it would have. That's why it was... Being, being a pain. Okay, good. So, so there's a little extra thread on the back, but this way I didn't have to either cut this all out and start again or add another one. So, so let's see if I counted correctly. Zero. Woohoo! Yep, that's two. And then I'll open up my thread list and you can see. So 38, 46. So, yeah, see, there's the one I just did before that, 3761, and then 3825 was from yesterday, I think, recently, and then 3846 is a new one. So I can change it so you can see an old zero I did before, and then, yeah, the new ones aren't hiding, but they will eventually. So, And, yeah, they also have a feature that you can... Um, you can uh, sort it by how many stitches are left. So the same thing, you could get the zeros to go all to the top or all to the very bottom. So yeah, I really like that feature. So if you aren't stitching like I am saying, you want to get a, a zero quickly, it's nice because you can sort through your thread list, find out which one has you know, the fewest stitches left and do that and get yourself another zero. So that's fun. 3325. Yeah, I'm not sure how long it takes for them to. It says next stitching session, but I tried like closing down Pattern Keeper and going back in, but that didn't work. So I'm guessing it's probably on a 24 hour clock or something because I got my zero yesterday. Yeah. Less than 24 hours ago. It was like in the evening. So I'm thinking that might be it. But anyway, yeah, it's pretty cool. This one will have only three left, but yeah. 
We'll get it in this pass, but not in this session. But hey, two zeros, that's pretty cool. Zeros are always so much fun. Nice little sense of accomplishment, especially in like huge projects. Yeah, it can take so long to finish, so you gotta take your milestones as they come. Because yeah, there was someone who was saying, you know, it used to be by page, but now that they're stitching with Pattern Keeper and it's all, you know, condensed into one and you know endless project with no pages how do you keep yourself from feeling burnt out you know and i said well you can count yourself by the big milestones like say every ten thousand stitches or you know every five percent whatever works for you when you get a zero of a color that sort of thing yeah thirty-seven fifty-two. so i count my milestones from uh got zeros for sure and also yeah percentage points so Sometimes those percentage points are just one percent if it's a really huge project. Like, uh, like say with my Firefly, yeah, like I said, one percent is over 5,500 stitches. So it takes quite a while to get that uh, needle to move, so to speak. Oh, goodness. Oh, phone call. All right. All right. Sorry about that interruption. We are back. <laughs> okay. I think we'll be wrapping up pretty soon anyway. Oh, goodness. That didn't look right. Ah, the strands are twisted around each other, so. Coaxing them to lie side by side again. Looks a little neater and it gives a little better coverage too. Oh my gosh. Why are you being like this? Ugh. I guess my non-dominant hand was just too weak. <laughs> I'm not having good luck with knots today. Okay, I think we will just park that, and I think that's where we're going to finish for today. Okay, so as usual, um, thank you so much for joining me today, and hope to see you here again another time. All right, thanks everyone. Bye!